Hi and welcome back. So right now I have some geometry created and if I zoom out you can see that we can see right through the objects right now because in my case anyways I'm in wireframe mode. If you um, right click on the title of the viewport, the perspective viewport in this case, just right click on that you'll notice that you have some options here for different ways to view what's happening. So wireframe is w what I'm in right now. If I switch over to shaded mode I can see the actual surfaces much more cleanly. If I uh, if I go into rendered mode it starts to apply more of a realistic look to it perhaps. Uh, rendered mode can be a little bit tricky though because if you have any lines or two-dimensional geometry created, uh, all that will disappear. So in general, if you if you find that things disappear all of a sudden, it could be because you've gone into a rendered mode. And just to finish off here, ghosted mode allows you to see both the surfaces and through them at the same time. Also, I want to mention that you can do the same thing in any one of these views. So here I'm going to go into a shaded view for all the viewports. Okay, so what is the relationship between perspective and these plan views? Well, the top view is looking at things from the top. So if I were to orient my perspective view like this, that's essentially what I'm looking at right here. The front view is looking at things from the front like this with the, with the green line heading away from us. And the right view is looking at things like this. Okay, so it's with the red line coming towards us in perspective. And while we're looking at these from different perspectives, it's all the same scene. So when I do something in one of these views, I'm doing it to really all of them at the same time. So if I were to select the H, it's selected in all the views at once. To maximize a view, uh, you simply double click on the title of the viewport so I'm going to double click on perspective and that maximizes it. I can maximize any one of these viewports so I'm going to maximize the top view, the front view, the right view. And uh, this will certainly help a lot when you when you're dealing with a lot more geometry you might need to be able to get in there closer and you might also want more real estate than what you get with just the four viewports so maximizing can help a lot that way. I'm going to go ahead and just maximize my perspective view. And I mentioned previously that to select something, you just left click on it. And um, you can select anything that's an individual element in this case. If you want to add things to your selection, you simply hit the shift key and continue to left click on whatever you want to select. And to take away from a selection, you hit the control key. So I can deselect something or again hitting the shift key I can add it back into the selection. A lot of the commands that we're going to be using take effect on whatever is selected so I might want to rotate only certain elements at once and so I would have to make sure that they're selected and that's how I'd, that's how I would go about selecting multiple things at the same time. Another option for selecting is to use the the left click and drag method which creates a box so I'm just left clicking and dragging I just start by clicking somewhere empty and dragging and whatever is within this selection right now will be selected so that happens from a left to a right whatever is completely within that selection will get selected in this case if I release the O at the very end of hello won't be part of the selection because it wasn't fully encompassed in that selection clicking from right to left anything that is within that selection or anything that's actually touched by that selection will get selected so in this case even though the H isn't fully encompassed it will still get selected because it was part of that selection box so left click or rather uh, going from left to right only whatever is in the selection gets selected uh, from right to to left anything that's actually touched will get selected 
this is really um, important and very helpful when you start dealing with a lot of elements that are close together and can drive you nuts at the beginning until you get that part down. To delete an element, you simply select it and then hit delete on your keyboard. And like I mentioned before, um, selecting multiple elements, for, for example, the E and then hitting the shift and selecting the O as well. If I were to hit delete right now, whatever's selected will get deleted. So both those get deleted as well. To undo in Rhino, you simply use the control Z as in most programs and you can undo multiple times as well so that's pretty helpful to redo uh, you simply do control Y so I'm just redoing those deletions at this point I'm gonna just undo that and one final way to select things that I forgot to mention is the control A command so control A is select all and that'll select everything uh, in the entire file so even if something is off the screen that'll be selected that way to deselect something again you can just click off of it or you can press escape and that'll deselect so I'm gonna select everything with control A and then hit delete to get rid of it next I want to show you uh, a little bit more about the command prompt area so we're gonna go ahead and start a uh, polyline which is a left click and um, You'll notice that when I start this command, the command prompt switched from just command with a blinking cursor to at the very top here it tells me command and it shows me what the name of the command that I just started is and then it says start of polyline. So it's asking me for something. It's asking me where do I want to start this line and I can choose anywhere and this could be for all intents and purposes in any one of these uh, windows. So let's do this from the top view for instance. I'm going to um, just start the command right there and as I left click note what it says at the very top here it says next point of polyline that's gonna be my next point that's gonna be my next point and this is indefinite until I'm actually done um, it says at the very top press enter when done so when I'm done I press enter and there that's taken me out of that command One uh, helpful feature in, in Rhino is that you can restart the last command by simply pressing enter or, or the spacebar or even just the right mouse button. So remember how I said that the mouse button in a plan view like this, if I were to click and drag with the right, right mouse button, I'm panning right now. But if I were to just click and not move, I've just started that last command, which in this case was the polyline command. So now I'm ready to start my, my new set of polylines like this and um, again it says press enter when done I don't have to press enter it could be the spacebar on the on the keyboard instead or it could again just be my right mouse button to end that command so I often don't even use the enter key I'm usually just using my right mouse button to start and stop things depending on what I'm doing I'm gonna just get rid of these and maximize so I can see everything I'm just going to right click on here as well just so I'm back to a sort of a regular perspective view here and the next thing I want to show you is that that these um, these windows are interconnected so when I start a command for instance in top view as I start this in top view you'll notice that I can see what's happening in the perspective view if I move over to the perspective view it's still in the same command and I'm just continuing with that command so um, there's a connection between the viewports in that sense and you also want to note that during the command at any point you can still zoom you can still pan you can still rotate in any one of these uh, viewports so uh, if you ever feel like you're up against the corner of something you can just keep moving around while you're still in the command and uh, I think that's it for this video so I'll see you at the next one Thanks.